These are the three best crypto projects that haven't even launched yet. Welcome to The Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of The Bean Pod is sponsored by KyberSwap. KyberSwap is a DEX and DEX aggregator, which is built to facilitate all your DeFi needs in one single platform. Fast, cheap, and safe. User experience is KyberSwap's sole focus to make everyone's life better in DeFi. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. There is no Josh the Nifty Investor today. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it, but I have three insane crypto projects that haven't even launched yet that we need to talk about. So the reason that crypto projects that haven't launched yet are such a big deal is it's because it's always it's a very early stage time to learn about or get into potentially pre-sales or just learn about projects before they haven't launched because that's the definition of getting in early, right? So I've found three projects, probably my top three projects that have the most significant potential to change the landscape of the crypto industry moving forward that haven't launched their token yet. So just because they haven't launched yet doesn't mean they aren't already building their platform. Many of these platforms have been in development for years and that's why they have so much potential, but they haven't launched their, their cryptocurrency yet, their, their, their token that's traded on, you know, Binance or PancakeSwap or however, however you guys like to trade crypto, there is no token yet for these, for these projects, which makes me interested because I'm either looking at getting in on the pre-sale or getting in early in some way, shape or form. So let's jump right into it. The first one I want to talk about today is called Partizia. And what's interesting about Partizia blockchain, it's potentially the world's first private and public blockchain. And why that's so important is because when you think about layer one blockchains and moving forward, you know, we're talking years down the road when there really is true crypto mass adoption, we're going to see everyday companies building on these layer one blockchains. But as you know, if you are in crypto, blockchains are inherently public. I can pull up your wallet address and see all the transactions you've been making how much you're sending, how much you own, how much you get, you get sent to you. So it's very public. So this data that's going to be on these blockchains cannot be vulnerable data if it's public. For example, a private blockchain use case that Partizia is potentially already working on is something like healthcare. So healthcare data is very vulnerable and you would never want anyone seeing your healthcare data, whether it be your medicine or how much medicine you're getting or transferring from doctor to doctor to hospital. This is all very sensitive information that cannot be shared publicly. That's when something like a private blockchain comes into play. And that's why Partizia for me makes so much sense. It's built for enterprise adoption from the start. So whether it be financial data, healthcare data, mortgage, lending, all this kind of stuff, private blockchains are going to have a leg up from public blockchains. And they claim to be one of the first projects, and and I'll say this with a grain of salt, because a lot of projects claim to have solved the blockchain trilemma. But Partizia has some pretty interesting stuff going on. So for speed and scalability, they use a technology that's called sharding. Now, I'm not going to get into the technical aspects of sharding because it is quite complicated. But all you need to know is that sharding allows the blockchain to ensure maximum speed and scalability. Another blockchain that you might have heard of that uses sharding that I like and talk about a lot is Near Protocol. So it's taking all the best parts of Near Protocol, which is the sharding, to make it super fast, low transaction speed, super scalable, which is inherently attractive for institutions. It's also secure, which is another part of the blockchain trilemma. And the last part is it's interoperable. Interoperable means it works across different chains and allows for bridges and stuff like that. So they, ha- they are providing bridges and also um, pathways between other blockchains and Partizia by use of their native Oracle, meaning it's bringing data from all the other blockchains back and forth from Partizia. So it's going to make it very easy for other blockchains like Ethereum, Solana, Algorand, et cetera, to work with Partizia moving forward, porting their projects or tokens over to Partizia and back and back and vice versa. And because it uses sharding, it's extremely environmentally friendly. So Partizia has a ton of stuff going for it because it only consumes a fraction of a thousandth 
of the energy required to power legacy blockchains. It's got a shit like, you know, first of all, let's just go back. This is all stuff on paper, right? I'm reading statistics, what it can do, what it could do. And that's all great. But when you look at a, an early stage crypto project for me, and, and Josh and I talk about this all the time, who are they partnered with? Who's the team? That kind of stuff, right? So here's where it gets crazy. The Partizia blockchain is already partnered with the Global Fund, who's run by Bill and Melinda Gates. So their connections are pretty high level. And I know everyone, you know, they put their tin hat on about Bill Gates and these conspiracy, this conspiracy, that, but the guy knows how to make money. So I like that. And they're already partnered with organizations in Norway, Denmark, and Sweden to build their blockchain telecommunications platform. So they're working with countries and massive organizations that have connections to Bill Gates. And remember when I said they're already potentially working into the blockchain healthcare thing? Well, that's because they're partnered with officials in Africa to potentially, well, they're already doing it. They're putting medicine on the blockchain to get rid of counterfeit medicine, which is running rampant in Africa at the moment. So not only do they have great stats when compared to other blockchains, they've got some amazing partnerships, which makes Partizia one of the blockchains that I'm looking at that hasn't even launched yet, that could potentially make it into the top 50 in crypto. So have a look for Partizia. All right, moving on to number two. This is one of my favorite projects going at the moment. If you've been listening to us, if you're in the Discord, you've already seen us posting about it on social media. This is the metaverse that will literally destroy every other metaverse. It's otherverse. So if you watch the Bean Pod, you would have probably already seen our interview with the founder of Otherverse, Brian Schuster. He is one of the godfathers of the metaverse. He's been developing this project for over 17 years. Crazy. So the Otherverse is a photorealistic meta metaverse. Look at the graphics. It's as close to real life as you're going to see in any of the metaverse products that are out right now. When you look at Decentraland and you look at Sandbox, do you really think that large corporations are going to want to make their corporate home and sell their goods and, you know, live in a cartoony world where people don't even have legs like in Facebook or Decentraland? Or do you think they're going to want to make their brands into Lego pieces like in the sandbox? I personally don't think so. I think the metaverse that's going to win out in the metaverse industry is going to be photorealistic to look like real life because when you look at Ready Player One and you look at the Matrix and all this kind of stuff, it's, it has to be photorealistic. It has to be real life. The real life metaverse that people are going to live in and work in from business meetings, you know, this stuff that, with the big money stuff of the metaverse. I think it has to be like real life. So right away, I was attracted to Otherverse. Now, when you dig into their technology, it's already built to host live events, concerts, meetings, business, blah, 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 you name it, with millions of people hosted on their server already. So it's built for the future and it's built to handle massive scalability. Their technology is patent protected meaning that no one's going to be able to copy their amazing platform when it launches. So they built a mode around their, their platform. Another thing I love. And I said it's been in development for 17 years. Well, here's the crazy part. The Web 2 version of the Otherverse, which has been running, has already processed over 32 billion in transactions, 32 billion transactions like as a number, which is worth over $15 billion American. So this metaverse that they've already created and running in web two is already making billions of dollars. And here's where it gets even crazier. The amount of users that the other verse has in their web two version, which has already been running and tested and been built for 17 years is more users combined than Decentraland and Sandbox together. So the other verse is sitting, the web two version of other verse has around 15,000 users Decentraland currently, and this is, when I learned about this, I was like, wow, how does this company, Decentraland, have a $2 billion market cap? They have less than 1,000 users, consistent users on, on Decentraland, which is a joke. Sandbox is around eight or 9,000, but if you put those two together, it's still less than Otherverse, which is 15K. And Otherverse hasn't even launched their Web3 crypto-connected NFT version of the metaverse yet. So we are early to this one. And here's another cool part about the Otherverse, which I love. They're allowing anyone to build their own metaverse platform in the otherverse, which means that companies, corporations, other crypto projects, you name it, they can come in and customize their own personal metaverse for their brand. And it doesn't have to use their photorealistic graphics. They're going to have rendering capabilities to 
make anime metaverses or cartoony metaverses or hybrid metaverses or other photorealistic metaverses. The company will be able to use their tools to build any metaverse that they want, all built around the, the other verse platform and token. And that for me is an absolute game changer. So not only are they building the best metaverse that I've seen, they're also building and will be providing the tools for other people to build metaverses. So I think for me, it's all about the other verse for the metaverse. People are going to be able to use their metaverse on iOS, Android, PC, Mac, and even Oculus right away. And the last cool thing and the really a huge kicker about the other verse, which is something that we can all kind of get involved now, is the way that they're using NFTs in their metaverse is different than all other metaverse projects. And NFTs, really. Like, you know, people think NFTs, they think profile pictures. Board Ape Yacht Club, whatever. But this is a whole nother level. They've invented what's called functional NFTs, FNFTs, where every single item in their metaverse, whether it be a glow stick at, for metaverse clubbing, your favorite shirt for metaverse bar hopping, your favorite metaverse beach toy for going to the metaverse beach, whatever it is, every single thing is, a, is an NFT, which has function and utility and can be traded in their in-game economy. So this is going far beyond the utility of, you know, you go to NFT projects these days and it's like, what's the utility? Oh, you get access to our community fund and, you know, we've got to meet up once a year in Dubai or whatever it is. That's not utility. Utility is buying a digital asset and being able to use the digital asset in a digital metaverse and also then being able to sell it and create your own collection of F NFTs and all that kind of stuff. So their, F NF their F NFT collection is called The Others and it's starting to drop very soon. So if you want to check that out, head over to their Twitter. It's The Others on Twitter. Or you could follow the main project, which is Otherverse. I'm following these guys along. I'm going to be getting into the pre-sale. I'm all about this project. So for me, the number one Metaverse project moving forward, and it hasn't launched yet, no token yet, Otherverse. All right, so that's two of my favorite projects that haven't launched. Now let's go to number three. This one is a bit of a different one. And it kind of, kind of, we don't talk about Bitcoin projects a lot on this show. We're, you know, as you know, we're mostly altcoin, crypto-focused. But I want to talk about a decentralized financial platform that's building basically layer two, layer three solutions for Bitcoin specifically. It's called Portal DeFi. Now, what Portal is trying to do is, is become this uncensorable peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, layer two solution on Bitcoin. So think of it like a layer two wallet or cross-chain DEX and um, transaction aggregator, but on Bitcoin. So we've seen what Polygon Matic did as a layer two solution for uh, Ethereum, and they did significantly well. But Portal is trying to bring similar capabilities to Bitcoin. Increasing, because as, as we know, or as you may not know, sending Bitcoin and Bitcoin transactions is not the fastest thing in the world. It's, it's not as fast as Solana, although it's much more secure. But what they're trying to do with Portal DeFi is bring the speed of centralized alternatives, more centralized alternatives to Bitcoin without sacrificing the security that Bitcoin brings. And I think this, if they implement this correctly, could be an absolute game changer. So their technology is called Fabric and it has a goal of replacing the web server model, which is prone to centralization, like hosting AWS, all that kind of stuff, by deploying censorship resistant layers on top of Bitcoin where people can build on top of Bitcoin. Now there hasn't been a ton of, of Bitcoin building going on because it doesn't have these layer two or layer three solutions yet. But if Portal DeFi executes, they have the potential to be one of the biggest crypto projects in the industry because simply because no one's really done what they're doing. And to back this up, Portal DeFi is backed by none other than Coinbase Ventures themselves, who if you go to the Coinbase Ventures website, you can see the projects they've backed in the past. A lot of them have performed significantly well. We're talking about OpenSea, Polygon, DSO, some heavy hitters. So if you're looking for a project that not a lot of people are talking about right now and you are a Bitcoin person as opposed to a crypto person, check out Portal DeFi. So remember the top three in no particular order were Partizia blockchain, Otherverse for Metaverse, and Portal DeFi. And I love getting into crypto projects early, pre-sales, launch, pre-launch, whatever it is, learning about these projects before they go mainstream is how you're gonna find some really, really cool opportunities. So I hope you learned a lot today and make sure you listen to the next episode. It's going to be a banger.
All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.